Today we're going to be looking at an urban issues and challenges question. To what extent has urban change created social and economic opportunities for a UK city you've studied? Before you start answering any question, it's really important that you break the question down into its key constituent parts. When you're in the exam, underline these key components because it will help you to organise your thoughts. To what extent is an evaluation question? Urban change, looking at an urban area, a city, or a town for example, looking at the social and economic opportunities that provides within a particular UK city. When you're revising at home, it's important to take your time, take your textbook out, take your notes out so you can break the question down and spend some real time looking at the details of this question before you start answering the question itself. Here's a good table you can use. On the left hand side, you can put down the example that you're going to look at, for example, London Docklands, or you might be looking at Bristol. Write down some bullet points of urban change that have occurred in those particular places, and then identify some social economic opportunities that have been created for those particular places as well. For any evaluation type question, a nine mark question, it would be a good idea to write an introductory few lines just to establish the key points that you're going to talk about in your answer overall. So in this case, this candidate has identified social and economic opportunities to a large extent are going to be created. I would not suggest that you start by writing a conclusion to your answer. So focus on establishing what it means by social and economic opportunities and establish, like this candidate has done, by talking about a particular place that you're going to focus on. In this main paragraph, the candidate has established some key facts, 10,000 new homes being completed by 2030. The candidate goes on to talking about how it's improved the living environment and also talks about encouraging employment to the area, bringing economic benefits through specific taxation. These are really, really good points made consistently throughout in this first paragraph. The candidate then goes on to validate the point in the second paragraph by talking about the extension of the population of the area as well as the number of people who own their own homes in the local area showing economic growth but also bringing in social opportunities with it too. In this paragraph a candidate establishes key facts from the beginning talking about 20,000 jobs being promised and 40,000 being delivered. The candidate goes on to talking about the creation of high-rises in Canary Wharf referring to specific places within the city and also giving examples of the creation of the underground station, employment for ticking staff and drivers, but also five billion pounds of investment in the area, creating again income for the government and employment for people who are working there. When writing an evaluation question, it's important not just to focus on the benefits that urban change has brought to an area, but also talk about the opposite too. What have been some downsides to it? In this paragraph, a candidate has established those key points and starts off the paragraph really well by using the words such as despite these positive opportunities. Use keywords like that in your answer. It shows that you have authority over what you're writing. The candidate goes on to talking about how in Stratford, the house prices have gone up to almost half a million pounds by 2020 and as a consequence has left over three and a half thousand people homeless and created less social and economic opportunities for those people who are living there in the first place. A conclusion is very important for an evaluation style question. In particular, start with using words such as to a large extent or to a small extent. This is actually in the question itself. And again, it gives you the opportunity to use those specific words. And then when you use them, the examiner knows that you are now evaluating at the end. In this conclusion, the candidate hasn't actually started with that and has talked just generically about social and economic opportunities being created. Later in the sentence, the candidate does talk about leading to a sharp increase in house prices, but what would be really good here is if the student had actually said to a large extent or to a small extent, economic and social opportunities were or were not created and then given those factors as some examples. You might be wondering what 
makes a level 1 answer up to 3 marks, 4 marks on a 9 mark question and what makes a 9 out of 9 mark answer? A level 1 answer typically would be very basic. In this case, the candidate might just say a cable car was built for workers or lots of homes were built in the area without establishing any key points of facts in the answer itself. For a level 3 answer, it's far more detailed. For example, for Silvertown, the council said it hoped once completed this 62 acre site would attract about 13 million visitors a year from across the country and abroad, providing about £33 million a year boost to the local economy and adding about £260 million to London's economy itself. You can only write like this if you've been practicing to write in the first place and if you've used your textbook and notes in advance before going into the exam itself. Earlier in the video I showed you this table which I asked you to complete using your textbook or notes. It's important that you do this task, especially if you're at home revising. It's no use you answering a question off the top of your head and then moving on. You won't have revised much and the likelihood is that what you've written won't be validated. It's important that you take the time to make notes, highlight the keywords before you start answering the question itself. Take the time now to go and answer this question yourself. Write it down and do the table if you haven't done it before using your textbook and complete this question. When you get to your conclusions, make sure you use these words at the beginning. For example, overall, or to a small extent, or to a large extent. Do not use words such as, I completely agree with this, or there were only social and economic benefits to the regeneration. A good way to start the paragraph might be, overall, I think that X has created social and economic opportunities, however, not always for the benefit of locals. Who have sometimes ended up worse off. A question that I get asked a lot by students is, sir I don't know how to write perfect answer, I don't know how to structure my answer, I don't understand what the examiner is looking for. You've got to go and write as often as possible and this applies to any of your subjects regardless of geography or not. You've got to learn to write in the right way. You've got to annotate the question before you start answering the question itself if you're not sure how to write well, look at newspaper articles. You can get them online, go to a good newspaper that you would enjoy reading, go look at it, look at how they put their paragraphs and then try to copy their structure in helping you to write your answers too. Write in the third person. But the key thing is you've got to write with authority. You've got to write in a way that the examiner, when they look at your answer, they go, yeah, this person knows exactly what they're talking about. And one of the ways to do that simply is by writing clearly and neatly. So if your handwriting is not up to scratch or you still struggle to handwrite, you've got to practice because we're still doing exams by hand and typing has not been made compulsory across the board. So make sure that you do that and this will help you massively with not only geography but also with the other subjects too. More exam questions coming up next week but in the meantime make sure that you review notes do the exam question from here, rewrite your answer to it and obviously go back and look at the relevant parts of this video to recap to see where you can improve further. It's a continual process, if you've not watched my previous videos, go back and watch those, do answer those questions too. There's a library that's building up now and if you're doing this on a regular basis as we're going along every single week, then over time, by the end of the course, you're going to do really, really well.